When it comes to PvP, there are few things more satisfying than shutting up a salty player. I mean, don't get me wrong, you are free to play the game however you like. If you don't want to fight somebody and run away instead, be my guest. But if you're being salty about getting chased, well, just know that you're making that impending victory even sweeter for the one doing the chasing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before chasing of any variety could take place, I needed to hone my skills in PvP. Because you see, I was due to set sail with a certain Wellen. Together with Brandon and him, we were gonna go hunting for some fights, and I wanted to make sure that I could keep up with them because, as you guys know, PvP is not exactly my forte. But alas, there was only one way to get better, and that's by getting experience. If solo slooping is the fastest way to get better at Sea of Thieves, then in my mind, solo PvP without buying supplies should accelerate the process even more. And that's exactly what I did. I stuffed my pockets with random items I found at the outpost before queuing up for some PvP. And well, most of these fights went about as well for me as you'd expect them to. While I did succeed, and edging out the occasional victory, more than anything, I was getting intimately familiar with the defeat screen. Which doesn't mean that I wasn't having any fun with it. Whenever I ran out of supplies, I shot over to the other boat to challenge them to Mak Gora, an orcish custom from World of Warcraft in which two individuals fight to the death. And let's just say that my priorities were a little different from that of your average player. I'ma count it down and then we go, okay? No! Okay, three, two, one, go! Yo, GG's, man, good fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to resupply. At least I still got my practice at the end of the day, and believe it or not, I did feel like I started to get better. Though, of course, that only lasted for so long because what I came up against next was an exploiter. Thankfully, this exploit has since been fixed, but at the time, this was a really annoying thing to run into. Because you see, if somebody queued for PvP defense whilst in the Red Sea with a Shroud Breaker, there was literally nothing you could do to get them out. As an attacker, you cannot equip the Shroud Breaker yourself, leaving you in entirely at their mercy. I'm gonna leave this clip mostly uncut because otherwise you're not gonna believe it. Sir, what you're doing is an exploit. Please stop. Bring your vessel over here. Bring your vessel here. Seize this foolishness at once. Bro. Stop it. Are you unkillable or something? Are you trolling me right now? Do you guys see how many shots it took me to kill him? Yeah, that was quite possibly the most egregious case of hit reg I have ever experienced. Granted, I could get into a habit of aiming down sights, but also, what the heck, Rare? Naturally, I have no qualms showing you my failure, because not only does it fit the narrative, but also, I was about to redeem myself. Thanks to his prolonged life at the hands of the In Areas of Intense Action deity, that dude got to leisurely check every single one of my barrels, at which point he realized that I was sailing with basic supplies. That seemingly gave him the confidence boost necessary to come out of hiding, and well, let's just say that this dude's aim was about as underwhelming as you'd expect from somebody who abuses exploits. He was absolutely incapable of landing shots as much as he was unable to board my ship once the fight started. I mean, I keep saying that I'm not very good at PvP, but let's just say that it doesn't take a lot of skill to take out somebody like him. But the cherry on top... Supply raiding time. Of course he doesn't have supplies, he's not trying to fight! God, I can't even steal anything from this guy. At that stage, I was fairly confident I could get an out-of-bounds victory. All I had to do was get his mast back up, spawn camp him a few more times, and we're good to go. But unfortunately, my idiot self had finally caught up to one very bad decision. No, my ship! I need to go, I need to go, I need to go. Oh, God. Please! Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it! I had saved my vessel at the last possible second. Forgetting to put my ship into a spin had cost me certain victory. And with both of us having run out of supplies, we were in for a very special kind of war of attrition. Without cannonballs to deal more damage, and without planks to repair existing damage, we were in a unique position where taking the occasional pot shot in between buckets was the only thing we could realistically do. Another case in point for Hitrek having been especially wonky that day was the fact that I kept killing him with my Eye of Reach despite not getting a hit marker. And I mean like, very often. Unfortunately, it was not enough to decide the battle in my favor because the respawn timer for solos is very fast and the sloop takes a long time to sink. This fight was going into its second hour when he began bargaining for an out. And I mean, I told him my conditions, them being that he can scuttle a ship and let me win because an exploiting scumbag like him does not deserve victory. But his reply definitely ticked me off. I fight honest? There's no shot he said that unironically. 
At this point, some of you might be wondering whether it wouldn't have been a good choice to simply cut my losses and queue for another match to get more practice. But you don't understand, this was the practice. Chasing down other ships is simply a matter of patience, and I was confident that if I was to come out victorious in this war of attrition against an exploiter, chasing down running reapers was gonna be a piece of cake. And well, eventually this dude realized that my iron will was a raid boss he was never going to conquer. Victory was ours, and I spent the next minutes bucketing my way to the new as outpost where a swift repair cemented this win. But remember, this was merely my training, so let's find out if I can replicate my solo success with Wellen and Brandon, or if my training was all for naught. It was time to get serious. Because Birdie was not here to captain the Rocinante, we had to switch to my brigantine, which is the aptly named Running Reaper. You'll see later why that's funny. Now I knew that Wellen was no stranger to the Sea of Thieves. However, I was also aware of the fact that he had not played the game in a little while. Of course, I expected us to eventually engage in many PvP-related shenanigans, but to start off our day, I wanted to show him some of the content he missed out on. And what better voyage to show off than a Legend of the Veil? Vale? The tornado it summons was bound to attract other vessels, plus, it is actually a really good voyage. And thankfully, we started our day with our spirits high. I'm trying to, I'm trying to put them right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? What the dog doing? What the hell? What the dog, what the dog doing, bro? <laughs> <What> the, <laughs> look at this dog, dude. <laughs> what the dog doing? Of course, for many of you, the Legend of the Veil vale is old hat, but for me, it was pretty fun to see somebody experience that content for the first time. Until we had to talk to Suds. Ugh, of all the modules we could have gotten, that was most assuredly the worst one. And our that luck only continued when I took a cannonball to the face. Now I did want to flip the voyage so we can get to the actual good stuff, however, I saw an opportunity for something more interesting. Uh, we could also queue for PvP defense so we can get invaded. Oh, let's do that. That's perfect. So I've seen a cheeky little rank 3 Reaper on the map. Oh! Oh! Rank 4 now, actually. Oh, not too far. This was a recipe for the best kind of chaos. I figured that, with us having queued for PvP, forcefully recruiting other Reapers on the map could be fairly beneficial. Worst case scenario, we just have to sink everybody who comes our way. Which wasn't something I was worried about, because I had a lot of confidence in the PvP prowess of my crew. What I didn't have a lot of confidence in was my ability to helm this vessel. That Reaper did not want to hear a dang thing from us, and my lack of experience was truly showing, as these guys began and running circles around us. Thankfully, my PvP practice was paying dividends, no more missing easy shots. Though our skills were truly about to be tested when a ship finally invaded us. Oh, we're being invaded now. Oh, oh, here we go. For real Goodbye, the time? dream crusher. The, the dream, dream crusher, crusher. let's go. <laughs> Oh, my dreams. We're gonna see whose dreams are gonna get crushed. I was determined to put everything I learned to practice. My helming was absolutely awful, so I had to make up for it by taking over the cannons. It is usually I who is responsible to land these shots when we sail atop the Rocinante, so at least that was a skill I could put to use. But tunnel visioning was not an option. I kept rotating positions to look out for borders between course adjustments and cannon fire. Though the crew of the Dream Crusher ended up going for a very unorthodox play when things didn't go there. Their way. They're they're not on their ship. I think they're all. There's the snake. Are they all boarding? Oh, nice. One on, one on. He's on. Hit him. Nice one. Second one in the water. That long. He didn't get anchor. He didn't get anchor. Nice. nice. Good nice. shit, boys. I suppose these guys were more of a boarding crew than a naval one. I was definitely surprised over the fact that the Reaper sloop did not end up joining the fray, instead making use of the distraction to get further away from us. And as is customary in my homeland, it is now time for me to explain why my ship name was in fact very hilarious. The irony that we are the running Reapers and they're running away. <laughs> Yeah, see, we're not running away, though. We're the running towards Reapers. <laughs> the running yeah. towards Reapers, yeah. I officially had the patience of a saint. It didn't matter to me how long this chase would take, I was simply along for the ride. All the time spent in the arena made me completely numb to the frustration of being denied a proper battle. Besides, I was confident in being able to catch up to them eventually. And before said catching up happens, let me tell you what these guys were trying in an attempt to get away from us. They queued for PvP. Now, the three of us, up to that point, felt completely indifferent about this sloop running away from us. I mean, come on, it's a three versus two. Running away is not exactly unreasonable. But these absolute bozos thought they could matchmake to fight another sloop in order to get us off of them. But you know what's funny about that? You cannot dive down as an attacker if another ship is nearby. So what ended up happening instead... Oh, two sloops! What? Wait, where? Bro's pulling up! He's pulling up! No shot. What? 
He's pulling up, bro. They got invaded. We unanimously agreed to team up with the Athena, utilizing every tool at our disposal to finally reel in our prey. Needless to say that these guys got rolled as well as smoked, which wasn't something they were too happy about. Oh my god, bro. You guys are so clutch. All right, now we fight, yeah, right? Yeah. This is what, this is what the betrayal no, 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 no,